Hello, hello everybody, hello and welcome. My name is Jake and I'm the community manager of Pixel Worlds and welcome to the headquarters of Pixel Worlds. And uh, yeah, it's a bit empty. <laughs> it has been right now um, close to one year. I think we are a little bit over that. So one year since we all went home and have been working from home because of the pandemic. And uh, I am the only one right now working from the office. And yes, that is exactly how it is supposed to be right now. But still, sometimes it feels a little, little bit lonely. I can't just go and talk to Endless. Endless is not here. I can't go and talk to uh, Dev or Midnight Walker or Commander K uh, whenever I want to. I might, could call them, send a message, but they might not be there at that, that point in time or they are working on something else and don't notice the notification or, or anything. Um, we've been super busy uh, with the updates and still trying to keep up with everything. So um, with that, of course, I think there has come a situation as well that we haven't maybe communicated with you guys enough. To remedy this a little bit, To we should probably do a devlog. Tell you guys what we are doing. Add a little bit more transparency into the development of the game. And uh, what, right now, what we are doing mainly is we are building a new feature, a huge feature into the game. Yeah, I'm not sure how we're gonna call it, but mo most likely it's just going to be the card game. Uh, but yeah, build, we're building a card game feature into and inside Pixel Worlds. First, it's going to be very big, <laughs> but it, it, it could be its own game at the same time. So you guys are basically getting an extra game for free, but we are trying to implement it uh, into the game itself to the best of our ability. I have seen some concerns from the community members asking like, um, is it going to be just completely outside of the game or, or like not connected to the game itself and it's not going to be popular and whatnot. We are like, I'm going to talk a little bit about the history of the feature and we are building this a little bit like uh, the and it has its roots on the uh, Final Fantasy games uh, from the PlayStation One called Final Fantasy like Final Fantasy VIII, Final Fantasy IX. In Final Fantasy VIII, it was called the Triple Triad, if I remember correctly. And um, it is loosely based on that same type of functionality that. The cards have uh, value on each side and then the cards itself, they battle against each other. If you are not familiar with it, don't, don't worry. I'm going to show you how everything works. I'm going to play a round of the game and I'm going to make an animation to show you how that basically is going to work. But yeah, Final Fantasy VII and Final Fantasy VIII, they are games that we played when we were young. They are the inspiration of this uh, card game feature and in those games it was of course inside the game itself that you could play against NPCs. Reach for the highest collector's level. What's a collector's level? And he's not going to tell us. Let me tell you about collector's levels. Even I don't know what the highest collector's level is. Damn it, four-armed man. And we're going to hope for the best. And then we flip a coin and of course I go first. Yeah, let's play defensively. We'll put my, my zombie card down here. And then there's the card battle, and as you can see, it's kind of random. Not sure yet, but it, it would be cool if you could play against NPCs that, that we have in the game, but of course against each other. Ranking, ladder systems, tournaments, uh, dueling your friends, etc. First part of this video is going to be uh, me showing you guys how the game actually works and, and how, yeah, what it is about. Then there is going to be a section where I talk a little bit about the implementation. So where can you get cards, how you play it, where do you store your cards, uh, because they are not in your inventory. You will have a similar like recipe book. You will have a card collection book where you can build your decks and uh, all sorts of that kind of thing. So how it uh, is implemented into the game. And at the end, I'm going to show you guys where we are with the future right now. So how far we have gotten and uh, how it looks like right now in the development servers and the development builds. So the inspiration to this game comes from the Final Fantasy series, also a little bit in Hearthstone. So there are some, uh, some similar functionalities, especially in the deck building section. And um, then on top of that, um, if you know the physical card game that um, Lego Ninjago did, uh, it's like loosely based on that as well. 
because yeah, that is based on on the Final Fantasy game. So, <laughs> but yeah, um, I think we should go and uh, start showing you guys like how and what we are doing and how this game is supposed to go. Um, any questions, anything at all, please write them into the comment section. I'll try to answer in the next devlog to most of them. We have over 39 pages of, of uh, design documents, how everything is supposed to work. So I could talk to you for the next uh, two hours about this feature and I still would not be done. So I'll try to compress this to, <laughs> to um, as short period of time as possible. But yeah, uh, let's go and jump into the game or the animation, and um, then I'll show you how everything works. Alright, so first I am going to show you this uh, simpler version of this game. So, um, in the middle there are just uh, nine slots where to pay place cards, and there are no effect cards or action cards, and there's a lot less cards, of course, smaller decks and everything. This is basically for quicker games, and if you want to try to learn the game and uh, the rules and everything like that, and maybe test some decks or something, or ideas, and uh, just, just to play and, and learn the whole thing. For this video we're gonna go and dive deeper into into the advanced version, so let's pull that up. And also before anybody comments about it, these are not final graphics, it's gonna not going to be black, but but yeah, uh, the background I mean. But yeah, uh, I'll share more when I have more finalized graphics for the backgrounds and everything. Let's quickly go through what we see right here. So on top uh, of the screen, there are the op opponent's cards, and then, of course, their player character uh, icon thing. And then on the bottom, you have your own. In the middle, we have the play area. On the left, there are discard and effect uh, places. Of course, discard pile for your opponent and effect card for your opponent. And then the right side is for you, the effect and discard. When the game starts, the whole play area in the middle is going to be empty and the game will end when all the spots have been filled. The one who has captured more of the opponent's cards is going to be the winner. On your turn, you can place one card to the play area, anywhere you want. If it is right next to an opponent's card, your card will, will try to duel the other card and capture it. If it has higher attack value for that direction, it will then capture the card and the card will then rotate uh, to you so you can see it upright. These both have 104, so it would not go like this, but uh, this is just to show the whole thing. But now let's have a sort of an animation battle thing, so I'm gonna show how this would go in reality. Both players at the start will draw five cards. The opponent would work exactly the same, but I'm not gonna animate it here for this video, otherwise this is gonna take way too long. <laughs> But now um, it would be my turn to play, so I, I am the first one to make a move. Um, the starting player is chosen randomly. In the beginning of my turn I will draw a card and then it's my turn to play one to the uh, board. In this demonstration I won't be using any uh, effect or action cards to make it a little bit more simple with the animations, but I could also play uh, some of those. And if I don't, then my turn will end and it will be the opponent's turn and he will draw a card and they then play one. Here my opponent has just placed another card on top of mine and their fire elements are going to go against each other. And right now, like I said, they are going to be having a duel and the bigger value is going to win. 58 against 32, so our opponent here is going to go and capture our card. Next it is going to be our turn and of course we right now have zero cards on the board and they have two so they would win right now but we will continue doing this until the board is completely full. So let's go back to the picture where we had the whole board full and the game done. And here we can see that there are only two opponent's cards, so the ones with the red thing around them, and everything else is ours. So here we would win. 
So those are the basics of the gameplay itself on the card game. Um, what, but what about the decks? So I mentioned that you can build your own decks and I'm gonna pull it right up here. And here you can see the basic layout. It's not gonna, once again, it's not gonna look like this. It's not gonna be black and everything. Uh, but it's very similar to what you have in Hearthstone. A little bit different though. Then our idea is to let you guys craft your own uh, cards as well. So when you are building your deck, for example, here on the left, we can see that, oh, I have two of these cards. So I could uh, dismantle that into dust or, or gas, or I, I'm not really sure just yet what are we gonna call that. But then if I have enough of uh, the, let's call it dust, I could then craft the one that I have as gray. The gray means that I don't have that card, so I could just craft that for myself. So this is how you build your own library of different cards. And next, I thought we could a little bit discuss for a few minutes, like how do we plan to implement this um, into the game itself? One of the biggest ways how we do this is, of course, how you get the cards themselves and then maybe you can get something from the card game itself into the other game. So how this this work in total? Um, first, everything is up for change. So we would really love to hear your thoughts and opinions how we should do this. But um, let's go through like what we plan to do um, originally. This is not implemented yet, uh, but um, we want the players to be able to acquire um, some maybe a limited amount of cards from Pixel Worlds uh, itself. So all the different features that we already have in the game. Um, this would tie at least some separate features more together since they, they would become a way of getting like these collectible cards. So we are trying to like knit everything um, yeah, to get together into this one huge feature and everything to be a part of it as well as this to be part of everything else that we already have in the game. So cards can be acquired in multiple different ways. That's our plan. Buying card packs from the shop itself, a pack of cards always, maybe this is just a work number right now, but probably uh, always includes eight cards. Six of these cards are guaranteed to be like most like common cards. Uh, one of these would be uh, guaranteed to be a rare card. And uh, one of these cards is guaranteed to be one of the following. So an effect card, uh, an action card, rare card, or a legendary character card. So there are a lot of different uh, different possibilities. Different packs with different prices for different odds and rarities. That is something that we, we are thinking about. So then of course playing Pixel World's different features. So this would be maybe special cards. Uh, getting single cards from different goals, uh, maybe uh, achievements, quests, maybe maybe some lore related as well. Hmm. Uh, then, of course, cards from annual events, uh, like player can win one of three available Halloween themed cards in the, in the Black Tower or from the Black Tower or buy a card with the Halloween candy from the Candy Demon. And so definitely those are possibilities. And I think we're gonna we're gonna do a, and use m like probably most of these. And then, of course, winning card packs from different tournaments that we are planning to have. Then crafting cards with pixel dust. Like I mentioned, uh, when you are building your deck, you can uh, grind your excess cards into pixel dust and then just use that to uh, craft the missing uh, cards that you might want. I know that a lot of you guys are going to ask about trading, so let's talk a little bit about that. I got like tons of notes here. <laughs> <laughs> Normal or golden cards cannot be traded. Uh, cards that can be traded then. So there would be some special cards. So special cards and probably event related cards. How are we going to do that? Um, it's not 100% certain yet. So there are good reasons why most of the modern, like, you know, digital deck building card games do not have a trading system. Assuming that all the cards can be crafted the same way, for example, as Hearthstone. So since most of the card cards players get from the card packs or other different ways, uh, they are mostly mostly common cards. Um, would these cards have very little value in terms of trading? Yeah, yeah. 
they, they would. So they would be completely like trash. We can already see this in, in ingredients, for example, from mining. Uh, there's uh, just their price have been dropping and dropping. In a normal situation, all common items just flood the market and therefore their value decrease over time. If and when these common surplus cards are used to craft more rare cards, this would probably mean that they either hold their value or uh, also the other rare cards would lose their value completely. So therefore there are a lot of like, problems with trading cards. But if we introduce like special event cards or limited cards, those could be made tradable since there would be only limited amount of those cards in circulation, therefore making them desirable. So this would mean that they hold their value to players um, if, if they would be tradable. So, so yeah, the whole feature as well wouldn't just... Uh, die from inflation or something like that so everybody would just have all the cards like immediately when they come out so because we do plan to add more and more cards in the future but now i think it's time to jump a little bit into the game and show you like into the development environment and show you where we are right now with like visually of course there's a lot more like programming done in the background that you can see right here for example with the deck deck building and everything uh but let's jump then here and uh, we're gonna go into pixel station for now and let's open this up and i have a special d button right here and I am going to test some functions. So here um, is just the uh, simple game. This, like I, this is just a tech version of it. So here I get my own cards, the visually, the animations, and everything. You guys have already seen this, but this is already working uh, programming-wise. It just visually isn't there. So, and of course we have done an AI opponent so that we could probably have four different NPCs right right here, for example, for the help, help bot. So we're gonna try to battle against this AI opponent. Okay, so we need to capture these cards. So we're gonna probably... The, oh, 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 this is probably a good one. I'm gonna choose this one and place it here. So these two guards battled and there's just no animations and I got it, but then he placed a card over there to that. So now I could place a card here that has bigger than 77 to the left and to the top it has better than 49. Do I have a card like that? Okay, I don't, but something that, that at least is to the top is better than 49 and the right is as good as possible. So probably, probably... I think this is going to be it that I have right here, this one. Okay, let's place that there and I'm gonna capture it. Okay, so right now he placed a card over there and he doesn't have anything better. And he did not capture anything from me. And 62 is to the right side. So now we could... Oh, I have 67. Oh, and it has 100 down. Definitely, I'm gonna use this one and yeah, okay. So now I captured that. Ah, oh, okay. I won't be able to capture that with anything. I'm just gonna place something over here and then you can see how the game result says you lose. <laughs> but uh, I think that's just a bug. But here we have one, two, three, four, five, six of these guards as blue and three red. So we would win normally, but uh, that probably is just the wrong text they have gone. Uh, when you say you win, you lose, but you lose when you win. But yeah, um, so we have the technical side of this feature already done in the um, in the small simple game version and of course it's the same logic in the board itself for the more advanced version okay so i'm gonna close that one and the next one i'm gonna show you is our te test um test for the deck building right now so technical side here we go these are just lump jumps uh, play, placeholder names. Um, I think they might be from the. Um, I think they might be from the Ninjago thing. I'm not sure, 
But yeah, these don't do, but these would be the buttons and different filters that you can see right here because I'm gonna pull it. Uh, all character actions, effects, and, and, and uh, golden ones. So then, of course, we can then change different pages on there. There you can quickly see uh, some uh, action cards and effect cards. So draw two cards um, once you play this card. And then it would give some plus to... Um, what does it... I can't even see. Earth and air, probably. <laughs> or action card in this... In this turn, your opponent's effects card has no bonus or effect draw card. So uh, this you would place into the effect card, into the effect slot, and it would stay there as long as, uh, well, uh, you play another card or your opponent removes it. But yeah, uh, there's a lot of different cards in total we plan to add. Uh, right now we have 190 basically done. Of course, the graphics are not yet here. Uh, they are just skulls, each and every one of them. Uh, these would be different, uh, like, rarities and things. But yeah, this is how it looks like, and they are dark and light, and I'm probably going to talk more about those in the next devlog. Something that I still wanted to mention is uh, selecting your opponent, so how you can play against everybody else. So there are a few different ways. There probably would be a ladder, or a tournament system, or both. And then there, and that would have its own UI thing. I'm not gonna go into that too much until I have something to show you. Uh, and on top of that, there would be a private way to play it. So uh, this is a way, private play is a way for players to select an opponent that is present in the same world where I, they are right now. A player can challenge another player using a wrench. A card game button is shown in the wrench menu if the player owns a deck and a deck has enough cards. If the opponent accepts the challenge, similar to trade, um, a menu is open for both players. This menu shows the information about the game mode, possible possible bets and possible player ranks. Uh, both of you bet, let's say, 1000 gems and like the winner takes it all basically. So you both, let's say, put 1000 gems, 1000 gems and the winner get, gets it all. I don't know, we thought about also maybe there sh should be a small house cut. Let's say that you would both put 1000 and 1000, then uh, the winner would get 1950 gems, for example. So just a small house cut or something. But yeah, I think we're gonna end the video here. Thank you very much for watching. There's tons and tons of things to talk about this. And I, we have huge documentations on everything and how everything works. But hey, uh, thank you if you stayed here for this long. Thank you so much. Um, I hope you liked th this video. And um, we probably are planning to do a little bit more of these. At least two to three weeks apart from each other. To show you uh, how we progress uh, further in the development of this feature and when I have more concrete things to tell you and then of course I, I'm, I'm gonna share them and there are tons of things that we can share um, already but I'm gonna leave those until the next time so thank you very much guys for watching my name is Jake and of course I'll see you in pixel worlds